So we are checking the correctness of the answers on problem number two. If two vectors are orthogonal, their dot product must be zero. So here is the velocity vector, here's the acceleration vector. If we take the dot product, which is the multiply the x components, multiply the y components, multiply the z components, you need to get zero. So we solve this equation, we factor out a sine t, and you get one minus cosine t plus cosine t. The cosines cancel out, oh, 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 we get one, so it's just sine t equals zero. When t is equal to pi over two plus k pi, <coughs> correct? Where k is an integer. Uh, what are we trying to find in this problem? At what values of t? Oh, it just says t between zero and two pi, so. If that's the case, then it's just pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2. What? It says between 0 and 2 pi. 0. Oh, 0, sorry. Whoop! 0 pi and 2 pi. What the heck am I doing? Okay, and then we also had a question on number 4. Oh, yeah. What about 3? Three? 3 came up? Uh, 3, I didn't know because it... I thought okay, it but now that you know it's t equal 1... I mean, I think I know it. Find the angle to the dot product thingy, right? Negative four. Okay, number four. Compute the integral from zero to pi over three of the whatever vector this is if f of t is equal to secant t tangent t comma. Didn't we start this one yesterday? Yeah, but the middle one. Okay, so what you can do then is you, if you want to find the integral from 0 to pi over 3, just integrate each component. So if you do the first one, integral from pi over 3, 0 to pi over 3 of secant t tangent t dt. We did this one yesterday, yeah? You get secant t from 0 to pi over 3, which is 2 minus 1, 1. Now the second component, what's the integral from 0 to pi over 3 of tangent t? Ah, what's the antiderivative of tangent t? Negative pi over half t by cosine. Okay, correct. From 0 to pi over 3, factor out the constant. And so you get natural log half minus natural log of 1, which of course is 0. So isn't that the same thing as natural log 2? Oh, yeah. It's okay now, I know. Because you can put the negative up as the power, right? Ne yeah. 1 half to the negative 1 is 2. Natural log zero is undefined. You can Ln three is one. Okay, so then it just like doesn't. You know, Natural log one is zero. Okay, so Ln zero you just. Ln zero cannot. If you get an Ln zero, that means you're doing something wrong because that's undefined. And then the third component, we integrate from zero to pi over three, two sine t cosine. I'm going to call on three people. I want three different answers. What is one antiderivative of 2 sine t cosine t? Cho, give me one. Um, negative cosine 2t over 2. Negative 1 half cosine 2t. Everybody see that? Right, because isn't this the identity for sine 2t? So the antiderivative could be negative cosine 2t, but then you got to adjust for the derivative of the box, which is 1 half. Okay, so that's one way to do it. Give me another antiderivative. Park. <coughs> um, integral. Like if you do u substitution. Oh, okay, but we're gonna do it. We're we're NBC. Oh, we can one, do it in one half. One half t minus. Okay, okay here. Let u equal to sine t. If you let u equal to sine t, then you're gonna have two u du. Which is, what's the antiderivative of 2u du? Wait, what? Sorry, wait. Um. Look, if you let u equal to sine t, isn't du equal to cosine t dt? <coughs> yeah. Okay, so then you're going to get the integral of 2u du. Yeah, I was going to do the sine, I was going to change it into sine squared. Good. No, which is u squared plus c. So yeah, that's the antiderivative. Sine squared t 
plus C, but since we're doing a definite integral, we don't need to put the plus and C. And before you do the U substitution, can you change that into sine squared T? You mean sine 2T? Oh, yeah, sine oh. Yeah, that's what, we, that's what Cho did on the first one, but I, oh. want, I want two other ways of doing it. Oh. Okay, and then, what if you let u equal to cosine t? Wang, then you would get? Um, if you let u equal to cosine t, then you get negative uh, u squared. Which is cosine squared t from 0 to pi over 3. All three of these would be correct. And can, do, you, do you understand why they're all equal? Because of the plus c? Because cosine 2t has identities, right? 1 <coughs> minus 2 sine squared t, that's how you get this one. Or 2 cosine squared t minus 1, and you get that one. Okay, which one do you want to use to compute it? I like this one. I like this one. So plug in pi over 3. Sine of pi over 3 is root 3 over 2 squared 3 fourths minus 0. 3 fourths. They all should come out to 3 fourths. So what are we trying to find in this problem? Find the integral of that thing from 0 to pi over 3. Oh, what, what did the answer look like? Was the answer a Actually, vector? Actually, that's right. That answer is right. I just oh. in the middle when I switched yeah. And then what about number 5? Yeah. Oh, yeah. We can, everybody can integrate? I don't know what happened there. What? <laughs> Okay, number five. Okay, so you're given the derivative of this vector. Well, you can probably guess what's going to happen, right? So compute f. So basically, if you're given the derivative and you want to find the original function, you, take, you find the antiderivative. So you, you do it for each of the components. Okay, I'll do the first one. One half t squared plus c. And, and is there an initial given, initial condition given? Yeah, it says f of zero is one. So if I plug in zero, you need to get one, therefore c is one. Okay, who's got the second one, huh? What's the antiderivative of this critter? Uh, root one plus t squared plus c. Square root of t squared plus one plus c, Did, is that correct? if you let u equal to t squared plus 1. Yeah. Okay, and the initial condition is if you plug in 0, you got to get 2. So if you plug in 0 there, you're going to get 1. So this has to be 1 to get 2 then, right? And then the last one, what's the antiderivative of t e to the t? Cho! Um, um, why do you do all the easy ones? <laughs> That's easy? you got to do tabular for that one. Right. How do you I find that? <laughs> you gotta do tabular, silly. Have we forgotten tabular? Oh, e, e, e to the t minus e to the t. Okay, t e to the t minus e to the t plus c with initial condition f of zero is three. So if I plug in zero here, you get zero. If I plug in zero there, you get negative one. Therefore, I have to add four to get three. Wait, why can we not use the product? Because we're finding the antiderivative. We're finding the antiderivative, not the derivative. Okay, so there we go. Okay, so all the answers there are correct then. Oh, okay. Oh, those guys were pretty good that year. I think this is uh, David Chang's brother's year. Richard Chang? No, between Richard and David. Oh, Arnold Chang. Arnold Chang. Okay, now look at this next uh, worksheet, MVC2. Look, I even give you notes on the top. These are some like uh, rules for derivatives. So all you're doing tonight is computing derivatives. This is like ridiculous. Okay, I will do one problem for you then. I don't think I even have to explain anything. This is like so easy. On tonight's homework? Yeah, it says duh, but it wasn't. <laughs>
Why, did you guys try it? No, I want everybody to try it before I'm going to show you how to do it. That's because you guys are forgetting some vectors, something in the vectors. Okay, but I'm not going to, I'm not going to do it. Okay, compute the first and second derivatives. I'll just do 1A, just to show you how easy this is. So, we've got a vector function, f of t equal t, times another vector function, g of t squared. Oh, it looks like we're going to be using the chain rule here. So, same, basically it's the same rules we learned in, in BC calculus. If you see a product, what rule do you need to use to compute the derivative? The product rule. How does the product rule work? Derivative of the first, which is 1, leave the second one alone, plus leave the first one alone times the derivative of the second. So if you use the chain rule on this, aren't you just going to get g prime of t squared times 2t? Or do we need to review the chain rule? Park, do we need to review the chain rule? Yes, please. Okay. Here is the chain rule. If y equals f of g of x, then y prime is equal to f prime of g of x times g prime of x. Remember the chain rule? Wait. <laughs> yeah. So that's what I did here. See, so you got g of f of x, so the derivative is g prime of f of x times f prime of x. So the, basically, it's the same rules we learned. We're not, this, this, is, this shouldn't be anything new. And then now we compute the second derivative of this vector function. So let me call on somebody. Park, do the first term, derivative of the first term. Um, two t. OK. Got to be different. Yeah. G prime. G prime. T squared. Or what? Oh. G prime. Oh, yeah. Using the chain rule. Okay, plus, and then, you guys, do we want to simplify that to 2t squared times g prime of t squared? Okay, ha, huh, take it away, <coughs> using the product rule. 4t g of g prime t squared plus 2 g double prime t squared 2t. That's, That's exactly That's correct. Every yeah. t squared in the... Where? 2t times g prime t squared. Not it is t squared. Where, where? I don't know. I told you in the afternoon, sometimes when yeah, the sun comes in, got the glare. Sorry, that's my bad. That's why I just move your head a little. Look. <laughs> yeah, not <it. laughs> All right, and then can, I'll, I'll, I'll let you guys can simplify that, right? 2t gorilla plus 4t gorilla is 6t gorilla. Okay, tonight's homework is just nonsense. Except, look, look at number four. A particle moves on a cycloid in the xy plane, and then I give the position vector. Find the maximum and minimum values of the magnitude of velocity, that's basically the speed, and the magnitude of acceleration. You guys remember how to find the magnitude of a vector, right? Like if you have a vector, well this is only two dimensional, yeah, like that, then the magnitude of it is going to be the square root of a squared plus b squared, right? So you have to find the maximum and minimum values of, of two vector functions. All right, we'll just see what you can do on that. that that's, that's, that, this is nonsense. And I hope you guys remember your power series because it's coming up, you know. And binomial theorem. What? Is it? what?